So, get this. You are making the animation in Moon, and you want to make it look good. Cinematic, let's say. But, you stumble into an issue. It's your PC. You don't exactly have the best PC in the world. It's kind of slow, RAM is low, and to describe it, well, it's kind of a potato. Oh, hi. With all jokes aside, I'm going to teach you some tips and tricks on how to make your moon animations look good on a potato PC. Here's a little basic one. It's a technique known as culling. Culling is where you selectively exclude portions of an object that won't be visible within a scene. To put it simply, if you don't see it on camera, then delete it. This technique is normally implemented in a variety of video games, especially in Valve games, such as Team Fortress 2 and Half-Life. This is useful for saving on resources, and get rid of lag. When using culling for your films or animations, I recommend planning out your camera work beforehand. One hidden contribute to lag would be animation files themselves. Believe it or not, animation files can cause lag due to all the data stored within them. Plus, having too many animation files within a character rig is a catalyst for lag. Oh, and to make it clear, we are talking about animation files stored within the character models, and not the ones in server storage. This tip is mainly for people who use autosave plugins like Moon Plus. Sadly, this is not a feature in the current version of Moon Animator. It's handy to have an autosave in case the worst happens while animating. But as mentioned before, the animation files, they do take up a lot of space. I advise changing up your autosave settings, and delete older autosave files to free up some space. To be on the safe side, keep the autosaves at a minimum. Let's say you want to do a scene that has a shot reverse shot, or they are meant to take place within the same place. But having everything in one place is laggy, so why not multiple places? This can be done by creating multiple place files. But this may not be suitable if you don't have a lot of storage space. Luckily, you can save your place files on Roblox itself, and sort them into one group as a game. You can even use this method in conjunction with culling. Oh, and you can do this with interior and exterior shots too. Just like live action movies and TV shows, not every interior shot is in the same location as its exterior shot. So why not apply that logic to your animations? You feel me? Fog is quite a useful thing to use when you want to imply your location is big and vast, but you want to hide all the imperfections. The original Silent Hill does this to great effect. So when implementing fog into your sets, for example, let's say you want to create a big city. You want to keep all the background buildings as simple as possible. You could do this with either low poly meshes or, preferably, simple blocks. Again, these buildings are not the focal point of the shot. In case you don't know how to get the fog to work, you go to lighting and play around with the values. You can even change the colour of a fog to match the mood of the scene. Anyways guys, that's the end of the video, hope you liked it, and if you're interested in seeing a Roblox mecha series, check out my main channel, Alcy on the Movie. This is Madformers Pro, signing out.